Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call this uh, call this budget meeting back to order. We concluded with the public hearing. Let's begin our regular agenda for the month. Number one, our first thing on the list is the county mayor. All right, sir. Uh, next, we have the Lincoln County Board of Public Utilities. I believe Mike Gooding uh, is going to present the Board of Public Utilities budget for the new year. Mike, appreciate you being here. I'm going to be short and sweet with it, okay? Uh, Y'all all should have the budget in front of you. The end result, uh, Lincoln County is in good shape. The Board of Public Utilities in good shape. By the way, I'm serving as interim before I go on. Uh, last week, the board did promote JoJo or Joey Clark, and he is the new superintendent of the Lincoln County Board of Public Utilities. So I'll bow out after this, and JoJo's in charge. Uh, the major things, the like I say, the water's doing good. We did get the ARP grant, uh, three-year projects, a lot of water line upgrades that will be happening in the next three years. The <clears throat> Probably the minutia of the budget is uh, the labor is a 4% raise. The water, we are raising the sewer 2% and the water 4%. Uh, other than that, the budget's good. And like I say, we'll execute the ARP program. It'll take three years to do that. And other than that, everything's running smoothly out there. When does Mr. Clark start? Uh, now. Effective tonight. <laughs> yeah. I just said I would do this for him. Uh, it was effective Thursday night after the board meetings. But uh, after tonight, he's, he's it. Okay. Call him. He thanks me for that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for Mr. Gooding? He's a longtime board member. Anything else, Mike? That's it. All right. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate thank, it. Thank you. All right. Next on the agenda, we have the uh, CFO's uh, Miss Sandy Metcalf to jail. Good evening. I come before you tonight to um, discuss the bid that was sent out for the Durangos. So we had asked last month to have the money appropriated for our investigators to get four new Durangos out of the drug fund. Uh, this committee and commission did agree and funded up to $200,000 to do so. So we're having some issues with getting the vehicles and Sheriff will address that shortly. So I sent it out to bid because there was a company that has them on the ground ready to go. There is a price difference. So the price is 42,190,25 on state contract. The price to get them on the ground for us to go get them immediately is $44,000. So that's a total difference of 7,239. So whatever the will of the committee would be on that. The reason we the reason we did it that way, and many of you remember the way we were doing it, and the mayor didn't like the way it looked on paperwork. We ordered five new Durangos the first of this physical year. We have one, and we're already bidding out new vehicles for the next year, and we still only have one new vehicle from what we got last year. So these vehicles, and for the general public right here to understand these vehicles are bought and paid for from the drug fund at no cost to the taxpayers of Lincoln County. I don't want to get in that battle. Uh, but I would strongly suggest we go back to the way we were because we were able to get them because they're on the ground. There is the second largest fleet dealer in Georgia in the United States, and he does have the Durangos that we asked for sitting on the ground at $1,500, I think, a piece more. But that's the reason we're asking to go ahead and get them so we can at least get those vehicles in here before we bid the next vehicles that are coming in and we still don't have the ones that we ordered. So, 
Any questions? Drug right. fund. Drug fund. Only even on the enhancement. Yes, enhancements coming out of the drug fund. What's Thank the you. what's the total on that? Uh, Seventy. The total for all of the vehicles. Uh, I mean the for the total extra that. So you're wanting us to? Just to take action on it. There was questions that we've had in the past when we went to do something like this as far as um, from the bid standpoint versus what state contract says because state contract, of course, is cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, but we having the issues with getting the vehicles such as the problem. Uh, so just as a courtesy to the committee, just wanted to bring this before you guys to allow you all to see what we're doing and get your approval to do so. Okay, today I thought I signed two checks for two rain guns from Columbia. We haven't gotten them yet. They aren't actually. They're at the uh, place being upfitted. We have not received those to us yet. So right now we don't have, but we have one on the ground okay. that's here in Lincoln County. Two have just been delivered to be upfitted, and then we're still waiting on two more that's not even been built with no ETA date. Okay, but okay, are we going to buy any more from the Columbia dealership or this van? No, we're going to go with the bid so we can get the vehicles that are on the ground in stock. From Columbia? No, from Brennan out of Georgia. Okay. Right. But just as a courtesy to the committee, um, Mr. Cunningham. Okay. All right. So it doesn't really require? No, sir. The money's already funded. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Next on the agenda, uh, we have the fire and EMA director, uh, Doug Campbell. I know Mr. Campbell is out of town. Uh, Ms. Bonnie, you going to present that? I am. He um, sent this letter, and I'm going to read it on his behalf. He's an advanced terrorism liaison officer class in Lebanon, Tennessee, and he would not be back in time for this meeting. In the fire EMA meeting on May 9th, <clears throat> he asked that line item 54310-335, which is buildings, and any money not expended, approximately 83,000, be moved and added to the new budget year starting July 1, 2023. He said the reason we are not able to expend the amount was due to several factors, delay in surveys, getting property through the court system, and ISO coverage questions. This money was marked for some capital improvements and as requested and granted by transferring to this budget year will allow for the continuation of scheduled projects as the surveys and other items will be will be or should be finishing up. This request was approved by the fire EMA committee. And then next he says, in addition, I would like to request that 54310-451, that's uniforms, and the same request. We were able to get most of the gear updated as planned, but again, production delays, and thankfully some new members were able to, who have completed required training, will need new gear. We could have potentially issued purchase orders, but this would have left line items open until possibly late in the year 2023, which keeps line, op line items open from previous year. This is a new request and was not discussed and or approved by the fire EMA committee during our last meeting. I'm asking that this move also be made in order to purchase the new gear after July and not keep open purchase orders from the current year ending in June. Thank you, Doug Campbell. Anybody have any questions for Ms. Bonnie? The second request, why was it not approved by the fire committee? I, it doesn't say, and I'm on that committee, and I don't, I don't know why it was not brought to us. Mm -hmm. I, I might be able to help a little bit with that for sure, but I was on that committee for a little bit. Sound like to me he's just wanting to have an open PO before July 1, and that's an administrative thing. That's not, a, that's not really a thing that the fire committee would normally approve. Uh, so, so he's just cleaning it, up his day-to-day -day -day operations is what I'm so he's well, he, I think he's asking to do a PO, PO dated in June and the, the uh, delivery be after July 1 and uh, I think that's what he's asking C commit the money and then yes, delivery. Uh, yes and, and we do that mm -hmm. all the time and I think that's the reason it didn't go through that committee because that's just a basic you know day-to-day -day mm -hmm. operation uniform normally any unused funds goes right back to fund balance and to keep from yeah. reappropriating it Okay. 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 Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
All right, any other uh, questions in regards to that item? All right, next we have the uh, finance director. Uh, got several budget amendments. Yes, sir. Uh, the first is actually a contract between the state highway litter grant uh, contract and the county. And this is on a reimbursable type basis up to an amount of $41,119.95 is allowable reimbursements if we claim those expenses and actually this is uh, just a new contract for 23-24 that needs approval okay all right the next items are our final since this is our last budget meeting before commission uh, for their approval to uh, do some uh, general fund budget amendments uh, so we can keep from having overages in the accounts and in most of these are um, moving money around in the same functions or the same sequence of accounts. The first one is in the amount of $74,332.79. Uh, this is the budget amendment to separate the opioid settlement funds, which are restricted funds and unrestricted funds. The next one is in the amount of $6,000. This is an amendment to record revenues and expenditures for recovery classes. The commission approved this at March 21st, 2023 meeting. Each session is $2,000 per month for these classes. And again, these two are opioid settlements that we have received. The next one is in the amount of $20,358.57. This is to uh, do a budget amendment to record our revenues and expenditures for a Homeland Security grant that we received. The next one is in the amount of $51,570.91. This budget amendment is to correct the prior amendment, which was approved September uh, 22 commission. The correct account should be 5431079. The next one is in the amount of $75. This amendment is to record revenues and expenditures received from Richard Wright for the purchase of a table from the EMA. The next one is in the amount of $1,500. Budget amendment to record revenues and expenditures received from TBA as a contribution. The next one is in the amount of $507.30, and this is to record revenues and expenditures received from John Griffin for the purchase of a helmet. The next one is in the amount of 186.20, uh, record revenues and expenditures from Delrose Fire Station for the purchase of truck stops. The next one is in the same amount of 186.20, uh, and that is to re for Boone's Hill Zone for the purchase of truck stops. Um, the next one is in the amount of $594. This is to record revenues and expenditures received from Lincoln County Volunteer Fire Department, Boone's Hill Zone for the purchase of hoses. The next one is in the amount of $300. This budget amendment is to correct the overage transferred in February from a prior budget amendment from the Park City Volunteer Fire Department. The next one is in the amount of $674,533.72. This amendment was uh, originally put in the budget for the EMA building, uh, and we're moving that back to fund balance, considering that we used our ARPA funds to purchase that building. Uh, the next few that you're going to see are the cleanups within the same sub functions. All of those uh, are total $35,654. And again, these are just to finalize the county general budget expenditure accounts for a year end. So we will not have any audit findings for the overages. Um, the next one is in the amount of $298,398. And again, that's to finalize our county general payroll accounts for year end um, due to overages and, and some um, to keep from having an audit finding for those. The next one is for fund 116, the solid waste fund. Uh, this one is to revise the original budget estimates. <coughs> The next one you see is 131 for the general highway budget amendment. The first one is in the amount of $116,500. That's to revise the original budget estimates for year end close. The next one is in the amount of $16,800, and this is to amend the final payroll lines for year end for 131, and that concludes 141. Excuse me, 131. And now on the 141, which these amendments were approved last night at their school board meeting. The first one is in the amount of 85,837. These are to revise payroll and budget estimates for the voluntary pre-K state grant and local match pending their e-plan approval. 
The next one is in the amount of $48,250. This reflects an insurance recovery from Tennessee Risk Management for a 2016 Ford E450 cutaway, less than deductible. This will be placed in 727-10-729, transportation equipment for purchase of a new special ed needs bus. The next one is in the amount of $80,000, and this is to budget donor restricted donations for booster club coaching supplements. The next one is in the amount of $648,350. This is to revise the year-end budget and payroll estimates. The next one is in the amount of $33,000. This is the budget revision requested by Susan Welch, who is the CTE supervisor. This request is for ordering materials needed to make the additional welding booths and tables, which is the initial step for ISM, the Innovative School Model Grant, also to have enough funds covering teacher travel expenses to the national CTSO conventions that run through 6-30-2023. That will conclude uh, the amendments in 141. The next budget amendment is in fund 143, the centralized cafeteria school fund. And this is in the amount of $121,400. This is to revise the year-end budget and payroll estimates. Uh, the next one is 146, Extended School Program Fund Budget Amendment for Child Care. Um, this is to revise year-end budget and payroll estimates in the amount of 11025 The final one is in uh, Education Capital Projects Fund 177 in the amount of $1,550,095. This is to revise budget estimates to cover our trustees' commissions and obligated expenditures for the proposed new Holland Rim School for land architects and engineering services through 630 2023 and that concludes all the budget amendment requests. I have can I ask a question on that 177 is this what they are requesting back from what they spent on the architects? This is to put in the budget for the amount that they discussed and allotted to spend on architects. Okay, thank you. Then next, uh, the financials are enclosed. Okay, I'll do the rest. Okay. All right, uh, the next part gets into the budget. Want to go back to the top of the agenda and we'll vote on that stuff and then we'll, we'll get to the budget. And I got a couple things at the end there. We've got a conflict with our budget meeting for July and we got to change. So let's go back up. Uh, got the Lincoln County Board of Public Utilities budget that uh, we need to be approved. What's the will of the body in regards to this? Move to approve. Mr. Taylor moves that we approve. I'll second. Jason seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. We just need one motion on that. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, next item was an uh, information item from Ms. Metcalf in regards to the uh, Durango bid openings. Uh, Next, we've got the fire and EMA uh, stuff that they had requested. Uh, what's the will of the body in regards to this matter? I make a motion we approve. Ms. Caldwell moves that we approve. I'll second it. Ms. Kate seconds. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. All right, next we get into the uh, <coughs> finance director part. Uh, the State Highway Litter Grant contract. What do you want to do on that? Mr. Sanders moves that we approve. Yes, Mr. Bryant seconds. Any discussion, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Next, the 101 general fund budget amendments. Do that as a group if that's all right. The will of the body on that. Mr. Bryant moves that we approve. I'll second it. Mr. Gewin seconds. Uh, there's a discrepancy on one of them on the uh, on the first page of the 101-54310. This debiting $51,798.91, but it's only crediting $51,570.91. I think those numbers might have been turned around, so which is right? It's the seven. It's the 51,790. And You gonna correct that? Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. Which one did you say was correct? Right. 
All right. Uh, no other questions or concerns? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Next is the 116 Solid Waste Fund Budget Amendment. Will the body on that? Move to approve. Taylor moves that we approve. I'll second. Mr. Hambrick seconds. Any discussion, questions on that? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Next is 131 Highway Fund and Budget Amendments. It's been attached. Move to approve. Mr. Taylor moves that we approve. Second. Mr. Sanders seconds. Any discussion, comments on that? Are hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Uh, next is the 141 General Purpose School Fund Budget Amendments. Move to approve. Mr. Taylor moves that we approve. Second. Mr. Sanders seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Next is the 143 Centralized Cafeteria Fund Budget Amendments. Attached. <coughs> Move to approve. Mr. Taylor moves that we approve. No seconds. Ms. Gewin seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Next, the 146 Extended School Program Fund Budget Amendments. Just a little body on that. Move to approve. Mr. Taylor moves to approve. No second. Ms. Caldwell seconds. Any discussion, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Yeah. Those opposed, nay. Next, the 177 Education Capital Projects Fund budget amendments. It's attached. Move to approve. Mr. Taylor moves that we approve. Second. Mr. Sanders seconds. Any discussion on that? Questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. No. One no. Get a, a hand vote on that. All in favor, raise your hand. And this is for us to pay that back, correct? Is that what we're doing? No, no this is no, coming out of their budget, it's their right? Money it's their money already. Yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, it's your money? money. Yes, okay. that's what I asked. Yeah, I, my, okay. my apologies, my apologies. Okay. I misunderstood. Okay. Okay. My, my apologies. We need to go, need to go back there. Have, uh, 177 Education Cap Funds. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Any no's? Okay. Uh, next is the financials. Mr. Bryant moves that they be approved. A second. Mr. Taylor seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed nay. Yeah, we got a got another uh, K down there. It's a state litter grant. Uh, that's something that the uh, solid waste manager also needs. Item number K. Just the will of the body on that. Mr. Bryant moves that we approve. Second. Mr. Sanders seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. All right, before we get into the, uh, the draft budget and that kind of part, uh, I think Mr. Dr. Heath has got uh, some comments that, that he'd like to make. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Cunningham. Um, I know it's been, a, it's been a long evening for sure. Uh, started almost three hours ago, and uh, I think we had, if I counted right, 25 folks that spoke. Uh, I've got some prepared notes that I just wanted to go over. It may take five minutes, maybe a little more here. but. Uh, uh, I want to speak up for our Board of Education. Uh, I know one of the gentlemen who spoke, I don't remember who it was, uh, was talk, uh, he, he made a point to, that we've got to run things like a business. And uh, uh, I just want to say, I think the Board of Education has done that. I know I can't speak from prior to 2016, uh, but I, I got here in January of 16, and I can tell you we have not asked for any increase since then in our operating fund, our fund that 
pays for us to operate our schools, which includes, you know, teaching and learning. It includes cafeteria, uh, not cafeteria. It includes uh, transportation, maintenance, all those things. Most salaries, except for maybe a few federally funded positions, are within that budget. And, and uh, the board has always budgeted since 2016, I can speak, to stay within their means. And there's evidence of that. Uh, you guys have seen our fund balance. You know, our fund balance is, uh, I think, after this budget, is, is still well above $7 million. And that's with us, with the school system, actually paying $1.5 million to do two things at Lincoln County High School. You know, the school's 44 years old. Putting in a new gym floor, brand new gym floor for the first time, and bleachers. You know, I've had, I can't tell you how many folks that have come to me during basketball season who have been longtime Falcon basketball supporters that just can't get up the bleachers anymore. And we need handrails, we need, you know, we need bleachers that are, are updated. Uh, and then those bleachers with the 44 years old are, are sometimes getting stuck in some other issues we have there. So we've got that and we've got the auditorium in our operating budget. And that's new seating, uh, first time, you know, in 44 years. Uh, flooring, uh, what, uh, curtains, whatever we can get within that budget, uh, we have that in our operating budget. And that's because our school board has worked really hard to stay within the means and run things like a business uh, so that we can handle those things within our, our operating budget and our fund balance. So, you know, my hat goes off to them. Uh, also, just a couple other things on that on that line, and I may be repeating things I've told you in the past, but, you know, since 2018, we've garnered over $20 million in grants. Uh, those grants are things that we're able to get done. Uh, now, we have to monitor those grants, and we have to have somebody in charge of them, but those grants uh, are, are, are things that we're able to get paid for through other sources instead of uh, local tax dollars. Uh, all the enhancements uh, and almost every salary is in our operating budget. And, and I'll say it again, uh, you know, the board has done a good job with that operating budget. Uh, I know I've mentioned this to you, but uh, the, uh, the amount of money that we have to share when we share with Federal City schools, uh, that's, that's uh, state law, whether it's bonds or whether it's, I think, property tax, that's shareable. Uh, in 2016, that was 27 percent we had to share, 20, 27 cents out of every dollar. Uh, that's down to 22 cents now because our population has gone up uh, and, and proportionally at a better rate. So, you know, if you want to take that and what does that mean in dollars? Well, for every million dollars of property tax that goes to schools, that's 50,000 more that stays with Lincoln County and doesn't go to Fayetteville City for every million. Uh, on a bond, if, if money is borrowed to build a school or to, for whatever, for school purposes, it's again 50,000 per million that is now staying with Lincoln County schools or Lincoln County and not having to be shared. Uh, there's a lot of money there. Uh, and uh, all of that doesn't happen by circumstance or accident. Um, and, and then of course, with our board and their budgeting and all those things I've mentioned already, you know, we've, we've had those best test scores in South Central, which you mentioned them in the beginning, I appreciated that. Uh, since 2016, uh, our school district was one of seven exemplary districts two years ago. Last year, we were that category just under that, you know, so we were the second highest category. So we've done really, really well, and we're very proud of that on, on our statewide uh, accountability model. Now, getting into uh, some of the tax things and some of the maybe things I heard tonight that I'd like to just share with you. Uh, you know, again, the school board w asked me to come to this committee with a request to, to build Highland Rim. And our estimate was $40 million. We, you know, we don't have it bid out yet, but uh, that was uh, told to us that that's about 40 cents. Uh, and then, 
we did ask for re you know, reimbursement. If we're going to do that, we'd also like reimbursement of the architecture and engineering fees in the land, which was about another $1.5 million. So, so about $41.5 million is what the request was that I came to you with. And then the next meeting of this, of this body, of this bo uh, committee, was when you set the draft budget. And, you know, I, I hate to go back to that night, but I want to go back to that night for a minute because it was over here in the library. And I remember sitting there, and as you all realized what you had to do for the county side of the budget, I think it was 47 cents, to, to get to a good spot. And then you went through every enhancement one by one, and that was a laborious task, I know. But you went through every one of them and came to a point that you, you had about eight more cents you had to add to that for things that were needed or required. So you landed on 55 cents. And I remember looking around the room, and I, mean, I saw sticker shock. On, I mean, because it was a, one of those moments. And, and, and then the realization occurred that our county commission also has a tax agreement with the city of Fayetteville that 50% of all property tax goes to schools. And so then the realization occurred that, wow, if we have to raise tax 55 cents on the county side, you mean we have to match that? Well, that's what that agreement that you have with, with the city, I mean, that's what it requires. So at that point, uh, I think, Commissioner Cunningham, somebody asked me, well, you really don't have to ask. What, we need to ask you, what do you want us to do with the 55 cents that we have to give the schools in this proposal? And I think I said, well, uh, it's a no-brainer because we need Highland Rim. And then that's about 40 cents. And then so I think 40 cents was directed towards school debt. And then if, 50, if there's 15 more cents, then that 15 cents needs to go to our 177 Capital Projects Fund. And that would be perfect money to renovate the rest of Highland Rim and then the county schools and the county uh, facilities for schools are set for many, many years to come. So, you know, uh, so I don't think it's fair that our school board is taking a lot of complaints that this is, this is the school board's fault because, you know, in actuality, the tax rate that, that we have right now for our operating fund is, is 66.81 cents out of that $2.10 for our operating fund, okay? If you don't raise taxes at all, you know, just you back up and punt and say, we're not doing anything. We're, it's still 66.81 cents. And that, that's all those salaries that have been talked about tonight. That's all of, that's everything running our schools. Again, because our, you know, we've done a good job with, that, with our budget. And the, the, the other part of it is if, you, if the commission raises taxes to the proposed rate, our school operating fund is still 66.81 cents. There's not one penny being raised to go to that. So, you know, a lot of what I heard tonight, and of course a lot was directed at me, but a lot was directed at other salaries and other things in the school system, None of that has any impact on this property tax increase, not, not one bit. Now, yes, if, if, you know, if to get Highland Rim built, you know, it would take that. But if, if, you know, if this committee said or this commission said we can't do any of this, you know, I, I'm, we'd, we'd have to back up and reevaluate our, our situation at Highland Rim a lot. Uh, but our operating budget and a, most of what was talked about tonight it, it won't be impacted. It won't be impacted at all. And um, so I wanted to just talk about that for a moment. Uh, our, our local maintenance of effort is remaining constant. Uh, and if you look at our new funding model, our TISA funding, nowhere in there is a dollar earned for anything to do with construction and maintenance. All right? It's all student driven now. You know, it's all student, every student is. You know, on average, it's probably going to be $8,000 or thereabouts per student. So uh, there's no way to raise revenue to build a building within our funding model for, for, from the state. Uh, so that's important to know. Uh, Highland Rim School, 
I, I know I beat this, and, and, and Dr. Pickens has done a great job at this. You, you know the crowded situation. You know, uh, you know the study I presented to you about zoning, because that was brought up tonight. The study I presented about zoning is about 17% of the students in Lincoln County Schools attend a school outside of the zone in which they live. And if we force all those 17% to go back, it's not gonna help Highland Rim. And even though Highland Rim is over capacity, South Lincoln is more over capacity than Highland Rim. It's just a better structure, better hallways and so forth. And also at Highland Rim, getting beyond that uh, overcrowded situation is, you know, that one building that was built in the late 50s, it, it does have the issues, 59 or 60, whatever year that was, it does have those issues that, you know, when you have a thousand people going through your building every single day for 50, 60, 70 years, whatever it is, yeah, you're going to have those issues. So uh, um, that was brought up I wanted to, to, uh, to talk about. And then this building was talked about a couple of times. Uh, guys, every square foot of this building is used. Uh, you know, we leased that portion of it to TCAT. Uh, that's, I don't know, about six or eight classrooms over here. Uh, we have in our entire central office in this building. We have four pre-K uh, classrooms in this building. We run our virtual academy out of here. We have three alternative school classrooms here. Uh, we take up everything here. And the gym is used quite a bit. I mean, it's, it's probably used more, well, not more, but it's used quite a bit uh, in comp comparison to what it was when it was a full school here. And then uh, regarding salaries, uh, first I want to speak to about the central office staff, the uh, supervisors. Something I want you guys to understand about supervisor salary and the way it's determined. Our supervisor salaries, uh, it, you find where they are on the teacher pay scale, okay? And so, in other words, however many years, steps you go down, then you go over, boom, that's their spot. That's what they would get paid as a teacher for 200 days work. Now, they work more than 200 days. They get paid for two more months. Now, granted, that pay scale is 200 days, 10 months, which is 20 days per month, right? But to figure out the formula that's used for the supervisor's salary is they get two more months. So you, if, if, if it's 50,000, then it's 50,000 plus five plus five, which gets it 60,000. But to earn those extra two months, which you would think if all the rest of the pay scale is 20 days per month, you would think that would be a 240 day contract. It's 260. So for them to get pay for the extra 40 days they work more than teachers do, they actually work 60 more days to get that. So every teacher, if you looked, I mean, sorry, every supervisor, if you looked at their salary on the salary scale and you looked at what that number is and you looked at it per day work, they, every supervisor would make more money per day as a teacher than as a supervisor. Every supervisor would make more money per hour as a teacher based on where they are on that, on that scale than they do as a supervisor. So, you know, that, it's unfair to say, to blame salaries, you know, on, when they're in that situation. School-based folks that work 12 months are on 240-day contract. Uh, there's one school-based pr uh, principal that is on a 260-day contract, which is considered 13 months. And it's just the way, it, the way it was. I mean, I don't know why it's that way, but that's the way it is, the way it was when I got here. So I, I, I want to speak up for those supervisors and all those results that, that we have. Yes, the teachers in the classroom are going to have the greatest impact on the kids in their classroom. The principals are going to have an impact on the kids in their building. Most of these supervisors, they, they, have, they have impact on every kid in Lincoln County Schools, some impact of some kind. So that adds up. Uh, and then, of course, I mean, my salary was mentioned. I, I just wish everybody had heard what you read in the beginning, you know, the, the accuracy of the dollar amount uh, and the things that were on top of the base salary. They're not necessarily bonuses, but what they are is stipends for different things that is very common in superintendents contracts across the state. 
I, I, I don't, I've met the guy at Franklin County one time. You mentioned what his salary was. I'm sure he has those, th those other things in his contract too. And uh, uh, so anyway, I wanted to make sure you all knew that. Uh, and wheel tax was brought up. So I'm, I've got to speak to that for just a moment. The wheel tax was brought up several times as an option. Uh, you know, I, you guys have a tough job with this thing, I know. I, I just want to make sure everybody knows where every dollar of the wheel tax goes. This was in 2021, and I do believe, I think this is still accurate, or it's very, very close. And, and uh, for tags, that the county gets $75 approximately per tag. $6.50 goes to county general fund, $6.50. $12.50 goes to old school debt. Now, I was here when Lincoln County was built, Lincoln County High School. Surely to goodness that's paid off, but it's some school debt in there. I don't know. I didn't, I wouldn't hear when that was done. So I don't think, but, uh, I don't recall if, if it was when we did Blanche, but anyway, there's 1250 to go to school debt, $14 go to, goes to jail, to the jail and $42 goes to highway. So that's the breakdown. And again, $0 out of that goes to the school operating fund, which is where all those salaries that we're talking about tonight comes from. So, yeah, it's not impacted by that. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, could, I could talk a little more about a few things here, but I, I think I've addressed all the notes that I took during, during the conversations. Uh, the one thing I, I do want to say is a little bit of data that someone shared with me was uh, the median property tax paid in Lincoln County. And of course the median is not the average, but if you lined up from the highest to the lowest, it's the one right in the middle. It's usually close to the average. Uh, it's $579 right now. And that is, according to the comptroller's website, that is ninth out of the 12 counties around us. So the, the only ones near us that are lower than that were Lewis, Perry, and Wayne County. If this entire proposal that you, that you have to consider goes through, that median tax will go up. I think they were, the number that was said tonight was 52%, right? That's a lot. Uh, but it would, st it would still rank fourth when compared to those 12 counties around us on this year's dollars. Now, I know several of them are raising it too because I talked to three superintendents today in other districts that were telling me that their commission is considering some kind of a property tax increase. So anyway, I, I, y'all need to know that data uh, because a lot of people talk about tax rate, which is more of a variable. A lot of people talk about assessed value and assessments. I heard that a lot tonight. But the real thing is when it hits the pocketbook, how many dollars is it? And so the median tax paid in our county. That's what I looked at, and, and I'll share that data with you. Or I, I didn't look at it, whoever gave it to me, and, and I'll share it with you, though, because it was, it was emailed to me. Uh, and uh, I think the school board has articulated our needs to you very well, uh, but I, I don't think it's fair at all for our school board to get any of the blame that's being thrown at them right now because they've done a good job in their budgeting, and that's evident when you look at their operating budget. It's very evident. And so I, I know you're in a tough position, and I, I commend you for what you do, and uh, I'm going to support your decisions and work with you as closely as I can anytime. So, again, I appreciate the opportunity to, to uh, go over that with you. Yes, sir. Any questions for Dr. Heath? got an item that, uh, gosh, I just about let it get away. Uh, Highway Superintendent Tim Gill had a contract that I think he and the county attorney had, had possibly been working on, Mr. Gill. It was kind of a late add to the agenda. Uh, uh, I was contacted by email last week from Lisa Lisa Dunn. She's a state aid director for the state of Tennessee. And the contract we had on the Beard Mill Bridge, which was signed in 2018, was all state funded, that contract. The bridge is gonna be 100% state funded. Now, uh, they're wanting to put some federal money in it. They call it a B, BZ, BRZ program. 
which it'd be 80% federal money and 20% state money at, at, at zero cost to the county. Now, there was some verbiage in the contract that Ed said was questionable. Uh, I talked to Lisa Dunn and she said they worked on that for a good while now and said, you know, they don't want to have two contracts because it gets confusing, but it's a standard contract. And basically what she told me was if we wanted to do an addition to anything that's in the plans, the county would have to pay for it, such as a red light or something like that. The county would have to pay anything over what they had budgeted for this project. Um, they are still working on trying to get that language changed, but Ed can explain the language to you more. But from what I was told, uh, Ed said, look like, you know, there was a slight chance if some the funding failed on this, that the county would be on the hook for the money. But uh, he can explain it better. They, they asked me to approve the legality and form of these contracts. <clears throat> and on the exhibit, this is a uh, about a fifteen sixteen million dollar contract. It's more than that. Just Let's okay. pull your microphone up there just a little bit. Sure. Ahead. Okay. All right. And uh, they had a provision in there that talked about an ineligible cost, and it says one hundred percent of the actual cost will be paid from agency funds, and the agency is Lincoln County, if the use of said state or federal funds is ruled ineligible at any time by the, by the Federal Highway Administration. And that made me a little uncomfortable because I, you know, Washington's kind of, kind of crazy right now. And whether or not they would ever withhold those funds, that would put this county on the hook for millions of dollars. And I just could not sign off on saying that it was, uh, it was legal because we have not approved that. Uh, so that's kind of where we are right now. Uh, if, the, if the county wants to go forward with this, I'm, you know, I'll be glad to sign off with it, but I'm not, I'm not gonna sign off on it if the county has not approved, that they have knowledge that if the federal funds are not available or withheld, then they are on the hook for the project. At least the done today did it. Uh say that if the federal funds failed, it would be 100% funded by the state at that point. If the, some reason, but once they're obligated federal funds, they're pretty much obligated. I mean, they're not gonna back up on contract just for, you know, because something's come up. But the way she explained it, it's anything that's, that's used that, uh, that's not in the plans. Is that, what did that, what's that word they used? Uh, ineligible cost. Ineligible cost, yeah. it's an ineligible, cost so uh, has the ineligible cost been defined I'm sorry has the ineligible cost been defined uh, mr. Taylor uh, as far as what it would be ineligible it's it would be an eligible cost if the use of said state or federal funds is ruled ineligible at any time by the Federal Highway Administration it doesn't tell you why it would be ineligible mm -hmm. it just says if it's determined to be ineligible and maybe it's ineligible because they don't have any more money. And then here we are with the project. But, and again, I, I think Tim and, and, the, uh, and the highway folks have determined that it's pretty awfully remote that this might happen. But still, uh, I'm always get, uh, I get upset with people that say, well, it'll never happen. And I say, well, change it, okay? And then they won't. So here we are. This is a standard form that's used through all the counties in the state of Tennessee on a BRZ program. Is this the new, uh, this, this federal funding? Because I know the state was going to pay it all along. Is this yeah. the new $1 trillion infrastructure money that's being brought into the picture finally on the federal end? or what? I, I can't tell you why, but they, they're going through a BRZ program. I'm mostly, I imagine, because of the cost of this project. You know, that 12, 15 million, whatever it is right now, it's probably gonna be more like 25 time they get to building it because this was estimated in 2018. I know all my cost on materials pretty much doubled, so. Yeah. Uh, Any talk about when it might be started in that contract? Or? No. They have uh, purchased some land 
uh, right away from some of the landowners. Of course, the county was two of the landowners, but uh, they purchased from some of the other landowners already. Uh, it's done all, had all the studies done, the geological study, the historical studies, the everything's been done, the surveying's been done. Uh, course, we this bridge is, I don't know if not of you know the Beard Mill Bridge, but it, it's the river crossing between Wilson Parkway and Malina Road. Uh, they're going to 100% fund it. I've got to build about 1,200 foot of road to get it to Malina Road, but the rest of the state going to build. And they, you know, they're going to do their own surveying, contracting, everything like bidding. We don't have anything to do with that part of it. 100% on the state. Okay, questions for, uh, is there a time table that we have to have this agreement back to them or? Well, that BRZ, Von, when it runs out, it runs out. So you get in and get your money, get on there, huh? Okay, I got you. Questions for Mr. Gill and Attorney Sims, Ms. Kate? Tim or Ed, whichever, are you saying there's no guarantee that they're gonna give us this money and that we're gonna to have to pay it? Once we sign that contract, that we'll get on the hook for this. Yeah. State's going to pay. Okay. Can that not be put into agreement then? This is a standard contract. <laughs> That's the frustration of it, yeah. uh, Mr. Taylor. That's the frustration of it. I mean, w once they build it, what are they going to do? Come get it if we... If we don't know. have the money to finish it. Yeah. I mean, it'll just be an unfinished bridge sitting there until somebody gets the fund and finish it. And it's not like... It's paid as it goes. You know, they have a monthly payout on all these mm -hmm. items yeah. with the contractor. So they're going to pay as they go, and when they get quitting, getting paid, the contractor is going to quit. But the chance of that happening is very slim. Then if the federal money runs out, then the state will pick it up. Yeah. There's an old saying, better be safe than sorry. So yeah. being safe would make sure that we got the language that's going to guarantee that it's 100% paid by whatever entity, federal or state. They're not going to change it anytime soon. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, because it's a standard contract for all counties. Mm. Now... I would like, uh, I talked to Lisa Dunn today, and you know, like I said, she said she welcomes Mr. Sims to call her tomorrow. She, he couldn't, wasn't able to call today because she was on the road today, but uh, he would answer any questions that he has. I didn't reach out to Ed because uh, I figured we'd get taken care of tonight, but. Okay, hey, Tim, questions. Tim, can I ask you? Yeah. So if they start a bridge and and then they run out of money, there. we're not obligated to finish it if we don't want it, right? Right, if we don't want it. But now, uh, this is, like I say, money's going to be obligated once it gets to a contract point. It's bid out. The money's obligated. The federal government has got this set aside. But from what... I'm understanding what she's saying. If the, if we want any extras, like if we want to put a red light on Wilson Parkway for this, it will be have to come out of our funds, the county's funds. If, if the, now Ed might read it different now, but now that's what I was told, and that's you know. If the contract is lit, and we do this all the time, so if the contract is lit, then it's going to be paid through the federal dollars. And then, are you saying that she said that it would be in pretty much it would be impossible for them to default the federal government to default on that contract? She said if the federal government defaults on it, it will be paid 100% by the state of Tennessee. Right now, the way it, the contract is reading, 80% is to be paid for by the federal government under this program, 20% by the state. And she said if the feds default then it would be a 100% state of Tennessee paper. Why couldn't that be in the language then? Yeah, is it written in the language anywhere? Yeah. 
Commissioner Taylor, they just won't change it. It's my understanding. I don't. They're not going to let us change their contract. So, Ed, it's what you what you read is from the federal side, correct? Only it, federal. Right. It says if the federal highway, if uh, the use of state or federal funds is ruled ineligible at any time by the Federal Highway Administration, then 100% goes to Lincoln County. So can the state, the state not give us a contract stating they would pick up 100% if the federal government we, we can ask for it. I'm from hearing Tim talk. I don't think we're going to get it, but uh, we can sure ask. I, I would like to, to ask to see if we can we, get that from the state. Have that in we, we can try. We can try. But they did said I'm not changing anything because it's a standard contract for everybody in the state. I mean, they put that verbiage in every contract. They have. Okay. Uh, and it could be months down the road or years down the road before they change it. And we'd lose out and not get and any. First to the pot, get to the pot. Okay, any questions, comments for Mr. Sims and Mr. Gill? Bill said something about traffic. Um, I sent a letter to Commissioner Ailey requesting that it be removed. Now, I, I have not received anything back to that just last week that I sent that letter. Yeah, it's been something that others have asked for in the past, but they will not do that. It's been going on for years. Again, I don't mind sending a letter requesting I don't mind asking for it. It's a highway project. It's not, I mean, it's through the highway department. I don't mind asking anybody. But to get them to write it in writing, I doubt if you're going to get that. Well, how about we do this? How about we, uh, instead of, uh, uh, how about we recess this meeting to just before the commission meeting and see if we've gotten any response uh, from the letters and stuff that we've sent? Uh, possibly we could meet maybe at 5.30 at the courthouse or 5, what, what do y'all think, uh, on the 20th and just see if, if any of the letters or anything have, have uh, gotten any kind of response. I don't know what else you could do, Mayor. Unless it stays yeah. them what Tim got verbally to get it in writing. Well, we, it, I, I, Since you've already had it discussed, you may be in a better position than I am to get to ask that to be in writing. Yeah. I don't mind doing it if you want me to do I don't it. think, oh, I, I mean, you're welcome to. I don't think anybody's going to put anything in, no guarantee. Because okay. it's just not something they do. That's the contract. You want to sign it, you can sign it. If you're not, if they don't care. They'll go somewhere else. Well, they're not going to start a bridge and then not finish it. You know, they're not going to get halfway through and say, okay, they're just not going to fund that anymore. Right. And they know when they bid it, if they got enough funding for that bridge, if they don't, they'll either appropriate more money or they'll rebid it and see if they can get a lower bid. I mean, they've got a certain dollar amount appropriated for this bridge. If that's their process, they ought to be willing to write it down. You, you would think. Yeah. You would it's think. been going on forever. I think it was Mayor Bevels that, you know, started this thing. So, I mean, it's... It's been going on a long time. So, well, we'll uh, it, motion to uh, well, you want to give it give it a little time and and we can recess. We need to have a motion to that effect, or you're not going to recess just yet, are you? Just We're recess, but yet. okay, yeah. we'll take up the contract then. Is that all right? You're yeah. not going to recess yet, are you? You've got other business to that tonight. Yes. Okay. You take that up. Y'all need end. a copy of this agreement? Uh, yeah, if you could get that sent out to everybody. Once I uh, signed it, I can't see it. I'm on. So and we'll just recess until the 20th. And hopefully, we'll have some more information at that time. Okay. All right. Uh, quick thing here. Uh, we need to get into the actual budget. I, I had some remarks, remark two that I want to make. Uh, Y'all know our situation. We started this the first week of April, you know, and I, I want to tell y'all that I'm so proud of all the work 
that y'all put in, we looked at every single budget and uh, looked at every single request. Uh, you know, and, and like I say, it's it's a lot of work, and I appreciate what you've done. It's uh, it's a really tough job for. <laughs> uh, but basically, we have a lot of questions tonight, a lot of wildly inaccurate information provided tonight, but uh, some good things too. We have three basic revenue streams that can take care of a situation, a situation like we're in. The property tax, which we chose. Uh, people say that only property owners pay it. That's not true. If you're renting a house, you're paying that cost and more. You know? Might not be paid in your name, but, but you're paying it. Uh, it's a very consistent revenue. You know what you're going to get from year to year. Uh, it's enforceable. It grows over time. It can also be lowered in the future. So there's a lot of things, you know, if you gotta have a tax out there, I, that's the reasons that I personally like uh, the property tax. Uh, a majority of the commission is required to enact it. Uh, just a side note, uh, try to, to give people an idea of what this increase will do. I personally, on my house and lot, pay $775, paid that the last three years. My charge would increase to $1,180, $405 increase. We have the wheel tax, you know, uh, and like I say, we, we kicked this budget out a, a month ago, so there's been plenty of time for people to, you know, talk to us about it. But, you know, people ask me, why don't you just raise the wheel tax $25? Gosh, I, you know, I, I wish that would cover it. Uh, $25 increase on the wheel tax is equivalent to 11 cents on the property tax. The cost of a tag for one vehicle would have to increase to $225 per vehicle to cover the 55 cents that we need on the general fund side. Uh, that increase would only help us with the general fund problems. It would not provide a penny, as Dr. Heath pointed out there a minute ago, towards uh, towards the school overcrowding problems that we've got. The wheel tax has three ways of being enacted. Uh, the legislature can provide a private act, which I don't think they would do in this situation. The commission can pay, pass a wheel tax increase that includes a referendum, and we would only have to pass it once in order to do that, but then we have to have an election uh, in order for to see whether the voters want it or not. Well, the next election that uh, is on tap is for March, the March primary. It means we don't get the money till next year. Uh, we, can't, we can't wait till next year. We gotta have a budget by August 31st. There's been some comments made, you know, what's the hurry? You know, we can't diddle daddle around till September, October. We've, we've got to have a balanced budget and we've got to get it in. That's the law in Tennessee. You know, we could pay $70,000 for a as soon as possible election to get the wheel tax or sales tax or whatever voted on, but it'd still be next year before it accumulated enough money. Because I remember dealing with this wheel tax before, uh, you know, it's not like property tax that comes in in basically three, four, five months, you know, it's all in. This wheel tax is over the entire year. So just a little bit comes, it would take several months for it to build up enough where we could start using funds from it. So uh, the third way, to pass a wheel tax is at two consecutive meetings, this commission would pass it by a two thirds majority and not include an automatic referendum. You know, in this option, the people can call for a referendum. All it takes is a petition signed by 910 people, uh, registered voters to force the vote. Once again, that puts us out until next year. You know, we can't, uh, uh, we can't wait till next year uh, for this funding. Uh, if we did nothing and just waited for an election, didn't take any action, our fund balance would drop. <laughs> I don't know how much, but there'd be very little left. Our credit rating would be shot. Would affect our ability to, you know, take care of our other problems. We wouldn't be able to get any kind of decent loan on, on anything. So, and of course, if we only did the the uh, wheel tax, uh, unless we went way up there, you know, four or five hundred dollars per car or something. Uh, we'd still have a big, hefty uh, property tax increase that we'd have to throw in with that to do it. We have looked at every single combination you could from, you know, a $25 wheel tax, what the property tax would be, you know, all the way up much higher than that, kind of breaking it out. So 
You know, we've looked at all the options as far as how you do that. Vicki provided an excellent uh, breakdown of all that. I personally never been a wheel fa tax fan. Uh, it's a very inconsistent fund. Goes up and down from year to year. Family has five cars, you know, maybe they've uh, decided to tag only three of them because they had medical bills or a wedding or maybe the cars broke down or whatever, but you know, it's an inconsistent fund and uh, it's kind of hard to base salaries on because of that. Uh, that wheel tax revenue is always going to be the same. And uh, say if it was $200, it doesn't grow over time. Uh, there's no cost of living feature in those things. Uh, I'm told it can't be lowered. I don't know whether that's, that's true or not. But anyway, uh, getting back to the me personally, I would pay $500 more per year with my four vehicles, you know, if we had that $225 fee to get your car registered. That would be a $200 wheel tax and then $25 for, you know, the state charges. The last revenue stream that we have that is large enough to, to, to help here would be the sales tax. Our current sales tax is at 9.75, one of the highest in the nation. Uh, Tennessee doesn't have an income tax. I think only one of seven states nationwide, you know, that, that don't have that tax. We live and die by the sales tax here. Uh, we can only raise it 0.25 cents, and the county share of that increase would be 250000 a year. That's, that's the most that we could get from it. You know, that's, that's not going to help us with our $3.3 .3 million deficit. Uh, also, that's an, it's an automatic referendum on the sales tax. So we would have to wait uh, once again until next year before this money would be available to us. And I think that's a big if. The last sales tax referendum failed. You know, I, I personally don't think the sales tax increase is a good option for us, not only because it doesn't raise near enough money, but because of where we're located. You know, we're right here on the Alabama line. There was a, a fellow, I wish I could remember his name, uh, Mr. Hallberg said, you know, he'd just gone and bought all his groceries down there because it was $30, $40, you know, cheaper down there. Yeah, well, that, that problem would only get worse. We got a lot of people that go to that Hazel Green Walmart because the tax is so different. That's because Alabama has an income tax and a low sales tax. But we're competing directly with them, whereas if you're in Murfreesboro and Rutherford County, you know, it's an hour away before you get into somebody that's got a different kind of sales tax than what you got. So, you know. We get slammed as it is trying to compete against Alabama. I don't think it's a good option for us. Uh, um, just my thoughts on it. If we don't pass this tax increase, you know, we're going to have to make some serious cuts. And there were a couple people brought that up tonight. What, what do we do? You know, I hadn't heard anything about cuts. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about the things that we would have to cut. You know, first of all, the, uh, uh, the organizations that we have, the nonprofits and stuff, a lot of them aren't really nonprofits, but you know, they, they would all have to go. You'd have to start with them. That's really the only extra money that we have. So the Fayetteville Lincoln County Public Library, 132,000. Crime Stoppers, 5,000. Airport Authority, the 18,000 that we gave them could be 49,000 actually this year because of a one-time 30,000 thing. South Lincoln Recreation League, couldn't do that anymore. Petersburg Senior Citizens, Humane Society of Lincoln <coughs> County, my gosh, we'll give them nothing, $62,000. Don't even get me started on how pathetic our funding is for something that we need. You know, we've got to have, we ought to, we ought to be paying four times that. And uh, we'll have to get, get rid of that. The Industrial Development Board is, is considered one of those, but by contract, we, we have to give the city a year's notice so we can't just get out of that immediately. <coughs> uh, Fayetteville Lincoln County Senior Citizens, a guy brought that up, you know, how much we give that? $12,750 to that organization. That's just pretty much helping them keep the lights on and, and stuff. It's not any, any big contribution. Fayetteville Main Street, 15,000. <coughs> Chamber of Commerce, 12,500. Forestry Service, 2,000. You know, all that would have to go, but that doesn't amount to anything. I don't know how much that is, about 300 and something thousand, I think Miss Vicki said. Uh, that doesn't even get us started. Uh, you talk about the five cents that we have set aside for industrial development. You know, we're using that to pay off the, uh, uh, the new industrial park at this time, but you know, that's only $370,000 even if we could get rid of that. that. That doesn't get us there either. All that together is, you know, about 700,000. So then we'd have to get to employees. I mean, that, that would be, 
Our budget's 53% employees. We gotta keep the lights on, whether one person's there or 10. So you gotta keep the building up, gotta keep the lights on. So uh, had Vicki put together some, some stuff about, uh, you know, how we would uh, do the uh, employees. So if we just kind of took one from each of the county offices, the one that was hired last, uh, and just got rid of those, Save us five hundred and thirty-four thousand dollars. You know, that's not even close to what we would need to make things work. If you did a little different, maybe the corporate way, and and pick out the most expensive person that you've got, the highest salary in each office, you're talking seven hundred and sixty-two thousand from just cutting that person. So cutting one person isn't going to do it. I mean, we would have to. To get to three million, we're going to have to cut two or more. Well, Mary Jane Porter, there's only three of them, her and, and two full-times and one part-time. So I guess if we did two employees gone, Mary Jane could run the office of trustee by herself with her part-time help that would come in at tax time. Can you imagine what that would look like? wonder what Miss Painter would think. Take two employees away out of that office. I mean, that's, that's literally what you've got to do there's your cuts I mean sure you can cut we can cut some travel and some some little things out of these budgets but y'all know these budgets are, are pretty tight you know you just you would have to get deep into cutting employees to get to the 3.3 million we'll go into more depth you know maybe with that at the meeting on the 20th I know it's been a long night, but you all have seen this budget before, and so you know what we're we're talking about here. Here's a, John. Yes, sir. A few things at the at the at, I know it's 10 o'clock, but heck, we've all been here. We just might as well stay the rest of the night. Um, you know, a few things I like to say. I, you know, I don't. I, I enjoy the public hearings. You know, we they they're long, and people they we had 25, 26 people that spoke, and uh, and they were very adamant about what they want, and we get that. But I'd like to kind of. Uh, add to what Doug said I mean we have been here five nights we went through every single penny that you can possibly go through and we made cuts there's folks back here uh, I think the sheriff's already left so I talked about him I mean he asked for all kinds of stuff we cut nearly everything I mean he didn't have enough people to run the jail now he's having to pay overtime to run the jail we don't get to cut that I mean we we uh, and and something something an old commissioner told me a long time ago, I believe Ray Jack told me this. He said, you only get to fight about 5%. That's when I first started. He said, 95% of the budget, the state's going to make you do it anyway. And he's exactly right. right. We only talk about about 5 6% of the budget. That's what we have to play with. The rest of it, we got to do it anyway. We don't really have any choice. And we've been here five nights. We know what it is. Some We've had a lot of commissioners come. I applaud them for coming to most of those meetings. Some of them did not come. Some of them are not here tonight. But um, one thing I want to say about the employees, because if you said, and Tori, Tori uh, Young was there and Randy Bradford and myself, and I would have, I, I really want to say thank you to those two people who made it to that meeting. Being on personnel committee is one of the hardest committees, probably besides this one that I've ever served on. Now there's some hard ones out there. But now we got some folks at the courthouse, and I'll, I'll not bring up any names, but we got some folks at, at the courthouse that are working in some of those offices that we would have to cut if we done some of these things that Doug's talking about. They're making $12 an hour. What they make? It's exactly what they make. Uh, I checked. I know every, I can tell you just about what every one of them makes because we went through all of that as a personnel committee, and we know what they make. That's not a living wage for those people anymore. We got to have those people in those offices. Doug, uh, he said something about keeping the lights on. That's what we got to do. There's a certain amount of things, and there's a certain amount of services that you have to have to run a county. I would like to throw this out there. We haven't had a tax increase in about five years now. And I would, I'd like to talk just a second about what's happened in those five years. Because one of the reasons, there's, there's several reasons taxes probably hadn't been raised in that time. I, I think we should have raised them last year, but we didn't. But, you know, everybody always talks about COVID, so heck, I'm going to talk about it a little bit. You know, it, we, we've been through COVID, uh, and, and we didn't raise taxes. I'm 56 years old, and I can remember the early 70s, and uh, 
in my time, I don't think that I can remember an inflationary time in my lifetime any worse since maybe the early 70s. Uh, I mean, I can remember when you couldn't buy but 10 gallons of gas, and we're not there yet, but we're close. You know, gas three dollars and eighteen cents today. Three years ago, it was a dollar eighty, dollar ninety. Uh, now that's got a lot to do, in my opinion, with the federal government. But what I tell people all the time is that we're not exempt from those things. Everything, go in my world anyway, works on fuel. Whatever the price of fuel is, that's what you're going to pay. It doesn't matter where you're talking about groceries. Doesn't matter where you're talking about a plastic feeding. No matter what you're talking about, it's, it's controlled by fuel. We can't control that. But we're also, and I want to make this really clear, we're not immune to that. Just because we're a county government, we're not immune to that. I can tell you that my household budget, and uh, it's just me and the dog, but it's went up greatly, dog food and everything. You know, it, everything that I buy is almost double. We haven't had a tax increase in five years. What I buy, and I've been doing some consumer price checks for a couple of weeks from now on some things, and in five years, almost everything I buy is double. Now, we're not doubling the property tax. Now, 52% is a lot. But now, we're not trying to double it, but that's what that's really how much stuff probably went up in those five years. I'm not through with those numbers yet. I know the food index went up 18.9% in one year. I ain't even went back those other four years. A can of whatever cost you 18.9% more than it cost you last year. And that's not counting the other four years. So... And another couple of things I want to talk about, about the staffing, while I, while I was on staffing. That personnel committee worked very, very hard to hammer out something that was almost impossible. And what we had was a study that nobody liked. And, and I'm talking about the county officials at this point. None of them liked it. They didn't want it. We'll do that. And, you know, we could implement that over time. It's going to cost the same amount of money. We actually hammered out a scale that they all agree to that's reasonable. It cost 3.5 cents. We hammered out something with the sheriff. He started off wanting this, and, and what, we, what we hammered out was not, it was half of what he wanted. And, you know, he can't get an employee now. So, you know, even what we gonna give, probably he's probably not gonna be able to get an employee then. I don't think it's gonna help him a bit. So, you know, it's not that we hadn't done the work. We've done the work. We just can't help that things have doubled in the last five years. It's not your fault. It's not my fault. It's not these folks' fault. It's definitely not the cons the citizens' fault. I know that I hear what they're saying. It's going to go up. Mine's going to go up. I pay about a thousand dollars. Mine's going to be about six, fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. And I don't like that any better, any better than anybody else. But that's what it costs. That's what my job as a budgeter is anyway. Is what it costs. Now I do. I, I don't mind any. I, I did get a little ill at, the, at some of not a, not any citizen, but now. Um, some of that, I think one we had one person that's not a citizen that actually works for the county government said something about somebody playing on their computer and their phone. And uh, I'd have you know, I know how to take notes on a computer because I was the only one doing it. I look around. So uh, I do know how to take notes on a computer, so that was me. But we had to cut some stuff, and some of the things that we cut were supposed to be temporary in the beginning. They were not, they were not to be funded forever. They're not to be funded for years. They were intended to be funded for a certain amount of time, and then that was to go away. Now that's not what that's not what you heard though. You didn't hear that it was supposed to go away. You just heard that that uh, that something got taken from me and I and I don't like it. And I, I don't like it either when something gets taken from me. I understand that hurts. But it was supposed to be temporary. And everybody here knows that. Everybody that's been on this committee knows that. And we have worked and worked and worked. I'm gonna go back to that salary scale again to help the employees that we've got. You know, we really have tried to help them. And I just don't know anything else to say about that other than we just can't help this inflationary time. It's not anybody's fault, it just is. So that's all I've got to say. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Anybody else got any comments before we get into uh, draft budget? Number one is the appropriation resolution. This is what pays the bills. We're saying that we're gonna Spend the money in those areas. You see the appropriation resolution in front of you. Entertain a motion to approve that motion. I make a motion to approve, Chairman. Mr. Sanders moves that we approve the appropriation resolution. Is there a second to that? I second. Mr. Taylor seconds it. Any further discussion? Everybody know what we're doing here. Okay. 
All in favor of the appropriation resolution say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. No. No. I need a, need a hand on this. Everybody that's in favor of it, raise your hand. All those opposed? That's it, five, two. All right, the tax resi levy resolution is next. Set the tax rate at uh, 3.20. I move that we approve that motion. Second. Mr. Bryant seconds. Questions on this? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. No. no. All right, got the same, same split, 5-2. Okay. Uh, got the nonprofit appropriation resolution. That's the nonprofits that we're funding this time. So will the body in regards to the nonprofit resolution? Moved to approve. Mr. Taylor moves that we approve. Second. Uh, second, Mr. Sanders. Any questions, comments on that? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. No. Still the same 5-2 split. All right, the, uh, that guys? I think that's it. All right, got a couple things. Uh, the uh, budget meeting, our next scheduled budget meeting was supposed to be July the 4th. Uh, obviously don't, I don't want to meet then. Y'all got any suggestions as to when we'd like to reschedule that meeting to? We need to get that in the paper and advertised. You want to go to the that Thursday the 6th, maybe, or well, we, can't, we can't put it off a week, can we? The 11th. I will, be, I will be going after the 4th the rest of that week. Vicki, you gonna be gone? The <laughs> <laughs> <Little> dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what's the will of the? We will go to the eleventh. Eleventh. Tuesday um, the eleventh. That's fine. I mean, I have fire EMA, so I'll have to. What time do they normally meet? Six. I mean, I'm fine with it. They can run without me. <laughs> do it on a Monday the 20th. Steve Sprague can uh, take notes. Monday the 10th. <laughs> Does anybody have anything on Monday? Let them change that. Anybody have anything on Monday the 10th? I'll change that to Monday the 10th. Then. Monday the 10th. Wait, wait, All wait, right. Mm -hmm. Any concerns about that? All right, motion. Got a motion. I need a second. Second. David seconds. All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Also got an information item. Uh, this new state law that I guess went into effect, uh, goes into effect July 1st. Is that correct, Mayor? Uh, starting July the 1st, the state legislature indicates that we must post an agenda for every single committee meeting on our county's website. So, uh, if you're having solid waste meeting, you know, fire EMA, whatever, you've got to list an agenda and you can't have, you know, new business or old business. It's got to be pretty precise as to what, uh, what you have on there. And, you know, I can see that kind of being a problem sometimes in the future, like that, that contract on the beard and mill bridge tonight, you know, that, yesterday's when I found out about that. So. Uh, you know, we'll have a thing or two. I think that sometimes we'll have to come up at the last minute. I, I don't know any other way to do it, but that's the law now. So you'll need to know that. And those of you that serve on other committees, which are all of us, uh, you know about that. So, Mr. Chairman, do we set a time for June the 20th? Uh, yes, we need to recess our meeting. Uh, you know, I want to say five o'clock in case five thirty. What do y'all think? Is there any public hearing that night? Uh, we do not have a public hearing that night. Our public hearing is over. Uh, so our regular meeting would be at 6. You just never know when you do it at 5.30. That's what I, I don't like about it. You know, I think we'd probably be better off at 5 and just meet up at the courthouse. Uh, maybe downstairs in the courtroom. Chancery, 
Yeah. At five o'clock on the twentieth of June. Everybody agreeable to that? I need a motion to uh, to that effect. Move to recess to that time and date. Right. Move to recess. Second, Second. Mr. Sanders. All in favor, rise. Right. 